This gameplay video is brought to you by Brandon Drennan. A massive thank you, Brandon. Orcus, Prince of Undeath versus Intet the Dreamer, Svela Ice Shaper, and Albeca Brute Chronologist. This deck is brought to us by Mythic Patron of the channel, Brandon Drennan, so a big thank you Tim for supporting at the Mythic tier. You can do that as well via the link in the description if you would like. We are last in the turn order, luckily all of our opponents just get down tap lands, we will follow suit with the Myriad Landscape. Oh, Becca holding up blue mana, and it is a Sol Ring for the Svela player. And that takes him straight into Seize the Spoils, which is discard, draw two, create a treasure token, discarding Sol Fire Eruption. And then the team of player just deciding to tap out and pass. We will get down a Swamp, and we'll go for the Tutor now, before I have to shuffle with the Myriad Landscape. And we'll give it to the Intet player. Try and befriend some blue players into not countering our stuff. Now, if we had Necropotents available to us here, then I would probably go for that, but we don't. So, seeing as how we've got Dark Ritual, we can risk a Bolus's Citadel, I think. Any means of card advantage we can get a hold of, really. Because we'll soon run out of cards with Shadowborn Apostles. Azra Oddsmaker for the Grixis player. And that did come down with haste somehow. At the beginning of combat you can discard a card. And whenever it hits, draw two. So, ah, that's why they have discarded an anger. So that's why it had haste. So they swung in towards us, hit us for three damage. And drew two cards there, going back up to seven. And Severa is the first commander to hit play. Huh, Rhystic Study. Uh, yeah, that doesn't go too well for us with the Bolus's Citadel. At least they're tapping down their blue mana, though. No doubt that that's what they tutored for. So we, of course, draw into the Bolus's Citadel. Can't afford the Bolus's Citadel while our opponents are shields down, unfortunately, so we'll have to continue to attempt to not look like much of a threat. Crack the Myriad Landscape. We'll get some red mana. And then Olbecca coming into play will feed the Rhystic Study player a card. And the Azra discarding an island this time. So both creatures going to be able to swing in. And they both go in at the team of player, thankfully. We need to preserve our life if we've got Bolas's Citadel incoming. So they go up to eight cards in hand and they will have to discard. Parallel lives for the Gruel player. And with the commander, that will of course make double the icy monolith tokens. So that's exactly what they do, tapping down their commander straight away to do that. And unnervingly, the team of player just passing priority with some blue mana held up. I'm hoping that we've befriended them enough by giving them that Rhystic Study and otherwise leaving them alone. So yeah, I'm going to go for the Bolas's Citadel here against my better judgement. Brandon always wants me to be less conservative with my plays anyway. So we'll go for the Dark Ritual. Go straight in for Bolas's Citadel. Feeding my opponents the cards each time. Alright, and we've got... The Bitter Blossom on top. I think I just played a land actually, which I shouldn't have done because we might hit a land on top here. Got to be careful playing lands with Bolas's Citadel because... Might be the difference between you chaining off and not. Anyway, a Shadowborn Apostle. Each one of these is going to feed my opponents a card with the Rhystic Study, like I said. Another Shadowborn. A Sol Ring on top now. Oh, and that's a shame. That reveals the secret salvage when we don't have a Shadowborn Apostle in the bin. So I'm just going to exile the tutor here to clear that out of the way. We would really like to have a Shadowborn Apostle and fill our hand up with those. Shuffling away the Ogre there as well, because we do have to search for other cards that are named the same name as the Tutor. Okay, final parting instead on top now, so I'll go for that instead. <laughs> and we're going to shuffle away the one with nothing as well. So, Tutoring here for two cards, one in our hand and one in the bin. 
we'll put Peer into the Abyss, into our hand. Lose half our life, draw half of our deck. And we'll put the Shadowborn Apostles in the bin as well. We might be able to get back the Secret Salvage. So I'll just put a Shadowborn Apostle in the bin. Another Apostle is on top. Now we've got Dark Confidant as well. There is Judith, a one of my favourite Rakdos commanders that I think was very underappreciated. Ah oh yeah, now we hit a land. So that was my mistake, playing a land from my hand I shouldn't have done there. We would have been able to play that and carry on. Might have stopped around here anyway, we are at 16 life. Hopefully we've got some alright chump blockers there. Might block with the Dark Confident, actually. Just so that we don't accidentally take a bunch of life. Throw down one more Apostle from our hand and we'll pay for the Rhystic Study this time. And that can be the turn, I think. Ah, uh, is that an Overloaded Vandal Blast? Oh no, they've only paid the one for it, paying into the Rhystic Study as well. So getting rid of the Citadel straight away. I mean, yeah, fair enough. I think the damage is... Close to being done on that anyway. Obviously would like to keep it in play though. Uh, okay, and then a turnabout. Is our opponent trying to help us here? I can't see it. Maybe they're just tapping down our creatures. Yeah, tapping down the creatures with the turnabout. So trying to encourage the Grixis player to swing in towards us. Oh dear, and we've got the Gruel player... He's not happy with us for playing Bolas's Citadel. It's very strange, there's specific cards that really upset some people. Anyhow, Ideas Unbound from the Grixis player. Draw three, we'll have to discard three at the end of the turn. Unless he activates his commander, which I dare say he will. And then discarding to the Azra again. And again it goes in at the Teamer player. Just getting rid of a land with that. So up to nine cards in hand. We'll still have to discard down to hand size. But ending the turn early with the discard effect on the stack. Getting rid of a Felwar stone and another basic. Majorite stone from the Gruel player. We'll be able to untap the commander with that, making a bunch of mana with those icy monoliths. And yeah, untapping it. And then tapping it again makes a couple more. And with that mana it is a Lightning Greaves. So now it's over to the teamer player, and they are using Prophetic Bolt. That will shoot the Azra, because it keeps swinging in towards them. Surprisingly, we're being very much left alone during this game. Nice to see some blue players that aren't just counter-tribal. So at the beginning of our turn, we will draw a card with the Dark Confidant. We know that there's a land on top, so we won't take any life to that, thankfully. Do take life to the Bitter Blossom, though. And then draw into Altar of Dementia. Okay. So I think we do some setting up this turn. Let's drop an Apostle. And we will pay for the Rhystic Study because our opponent had to discard down to hand size. Doesn't have 15 cards in hand anymore or whatever it was. Play another Shadowborn Apostle. And then we'll get out this Altar of Dementia as well. We can load up our graveyard with that ready for some kind of mass reanimation. Then it seems as though the team of player is still leaving us alone for the most part, so we'll try and keep it that way. Swing everything in towards the left at Obeka. I'll hold back the Dark Confident because I don't mind blocking with that. Because it does mean that we won't take a big chunk of life by accident. Now nah, that's a shame. Bajuka Bog gets rid of our graveyard there, so I don't think there was ever any chance... Of us really getting the secret salvage back, but there certainly isn't now that it's in exile. And a cipher mind. Uh, yeah, peer into the abyss. We are not going to have to discard. We only discard one card with cipher mind, thankfully. So get rid of the land there, of course. And the old Becca player back up to nine cards in hand. So at the end of the turn, they got rid of a Worm Coil Engine. Oh, there's a Phyrexian Triniform in there as well. Uh, Corsair of Crufix here, Field of the Dead for the Gruel player. <laughs> That's funny. Complaining about us playing Bolas' Citadel and plays Field of the Dead. 
And upon activating his commander gets a volcanic vision, <laughs> and that's pointed at the big red spell that is in the bin, so that is going to wipe the opponent's board. Wipe it of creatures at least, so in response to that we'll have to go for the activation on the Shadowborn Apostles, and we'll go after the Tutor Demon here. Not going to keep it in play, but we can get some Tutors going. Judith triggering during all this. And we'll just point it at the Grove player who has decided to wipe the board as punishment. So yeah, could go for Vilis, uh, but we don't have a lot of life to lose. Plus we've got Peer into the Abyss in hand, so let's go for the Razaketh here. Gonna have to lose even more life to do this, unfortunately, but it's pretty much our only out at this point. Get rid of the Dark Confident, and then Razaketh will allow us to tutor. I think Rise of the Dark Realms would be the intelligent play here. Uh, we are a mana shy of that though, so we'll have to tutor up a land as well, which we can do. So putting that into hand, we will sacrifice the fairy as well. It's noteworthy that if Judith has lifelink from the Shadow Spear or Basilisk Collar, then we will be gaining life from all these pings. Might be worth a consideration for Brandon, although Whip of Erebos is in the deck for such things as well. So we get the Urborg into hand, and now, before we lose our creatures, we might as well just sacrifice to the altar and point the altar at ourselves for some self-mill ready for the reanimation. And then do the same with Judith as well. So hopefully we don't see anything too big and scary from our opponent, because they do have haste in the form of the Lightning Greaves. But successfully managing to wipe the board, there is a Rot Lung Reanimator. Another Apostle. A tutor, some Apostles. I don't think we did anything all that incredible on the mill front. There is the one with nothing. The whole point in one with nothing in this deck, it will need a hell of a lot of mana. But one line that Brandon brought up was to refill our hand with the Peer into the Abyss or the Secret Salvage if we can refill our hand with Apostles. Then with the Rise of the Dark Realms on the stack, cast one with nothing and you will discard your hand and then reanimate all the creatures once the Rise of the Dark Realms uh, resolves. Obviously casting Peer into the Abyss and Rise of the Dark Realms all in one turn is a big ask, but that is something that you could do. Anyway, Lotus Cobra coming into play for the Dragon Player. And then they go for Eternal Witness, not sure what they're grabbing back there. Oh, it's the Stryonic Resonator that they want back. And playing the Stryonic Resonator, so both the blue players tapping out again, that's really good. So round to our turn, we get a Fairy Rogue down to 8 life. So, yeah, it's do or die at the moment, I think. Let's go for the Rise of the Dark Realms. Feeding the Rhystic Study Player a card yet again. Alright, and that actually lands, so uh, yeah, we're looking pretty good here now. Uh, a clone has come into play here, so yeah, this is from the Teamer player. Why don't we just copy the Eternal Witness? Oh, and there's an Alter Ego as well. So yeah, we get two clones there, so both of those can come in as copies of the E-Witness. Oh wow, and we've got a Perforos into play as well. I don't think that was our Perforos, it is in the deck, but no, it's not ours. So we'll put Eternal Witness on the stack. That can grab the Whip of Erebos to regain us some life. And then why don't we, just in case someone wipes the board, the other E-Witness that also came down as a clone, that can get the Rise of the Dark Realms back as well. And we've ended up with Pestilence Demon on top of our library. Which we can see, thanks to the Corsair of Crufix. So, I'm not quite sure if we actually just have our opponents here with the Perforos damage. This is from the Teamer player, it's not our Perforos. Obviously got the Rotlung Reanimator back as well, which goes well with the Perforos. So yeah, even if we don't have them with this much damage on the stack, thanks to the Rotlung Reanimator, I think we've got them regardless. Yeah, there we go. We still had some Perforos triggers on the stack there, but managed to get our opponents down to zero thanks to the fact that the Teamer player milled or discarded a Perforos at some point. 
Without the Perforos in play, the line is next turn to get the whip down, turning sideways and regain a bunch of life just to take us out of the danger zone, I think. And then maybe we can tutor for the Perforos and do some damage with Rotlung Reanimator and the Shadowborn Apostles. Every time we sacrifice a Shadowborn Apostle, we will get a zombie into play and that will obviously trigger the Perforos. But yeah, pretty explosive one there, so a big thank you to Brandon Drennan for supporting the channel so consistently at the Mythic tier. You can do that as well via the link in the description below. So a big thank you to Brandon, big thank you to all the other patrons as well. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.